You are watching a clip from the John Perry channel. Genetics and evolution. The skeleton sort of acts like an intelligent system, right? It's, it's, it's Absolutely. finding ways to optimize itself. Yeah. Is this all, do we understand, I mean, I guess we don't understand all the rules that are happening, but this, this must just be happening as individual cells are communicating with each other and just obeying fairly simple rules, like if then statements, essentially, if you want Basically. to think about it, like programming. Totally. Yeah, yeah. How many mysteries are there, do you think, that we still just don't understand? Or has oh, has so that many. communication system been well understood? Like, do we know the if-then statements? Um, to, to a pretty big extent, yes, in some ways, because we have a lot of drugs that act on these if-then statements. Basically, like, if, if hormone rankle is present, uh, osteoblast is deactivated. If osteoblast is deactivated, it turns off its like system. It's basically like coding. It's exactly like biological coding, right? Mm -hmm. So when one cell turns off its system, it changes its keys and it can no longer be activated. It can only be activated when you turn on a different key. There is this problem that uh, women after menopause have, which is that the weakening of the hips. Well, I don't know. Is it the whole skeleton or is it just it's the, the hip area? Skeleton. It's the whole skeleton. So we why see is that unique of, to women or seem to be unique to women? Good question. So because our remodeling cycle is actually related to our estrogen cycle, when mm. women go through menopause, they lose the certain amount of estrogen that they were already making. The estrogen was the off key for your osteoclast, the cells that that um, eat bone. Or eat it's, bone. It's, it's it's yeah. Dissolve. So they're yeah. yeah, basically. So they are the estrogen was one step in one of those multi-chain reactions that then turns off those bone eating cells. So when you lose that off switch, your bone eating cells are going basically too far. They're doing their job too well and there's nothing to check them. So that's why women have that problem. Why we see most of those issues in the hips and in the back, like you, like you mentioned, is because we're bipedal. Right, that's where most yeah. of our pressure actually goes. We, that's where our like basically center of gravity is. Mostly it's your uh, lumbar um, vertebrae. It's as they get weaker, they kind of compress. And that's why older people get shorter. We right. actually lose like bone mass and they you know get shorter <laughs> and they get the hunched yeah. back and all that. That's from deformation of the vertebrae. So that's all because of those links. And it's all because our remodeling system is just going too much compared to the building system, which is just not going as fast because we're aging. So it's kind of a double whammy. And are you saying that is that that's fully treatable now or is it partially treatable? It's, it's, it's only partially treatable because like everything, nothing is super easy. So <laughs> even if, so there, there are some estrogen supplements and stuff like that. Um, I'm not a doctor, by the way, anyone that is watching, um, not a medical doctor, but I've studied this quite a bit. So one of the issues is, okay, for example, and not that doctors have suggested this, but for example, let's say we replace estrogen to formerly normal levels. Yeah. All the other parts of meta menopause are still active. So your body actually doesn't know what to do with all the extra estrogen. And that has been linked with increased levels of breast cancer and cervical yeah. cancer and uterine cancer. So it's kind of an interesting balancing act. And now it's much yeah. more treatable where you, they encourage young women like myself to go and get a baseline bone scan so they can, you know, kind of monitor oh, you for yeah. the next 30 years. So my grandma, <clears throat> it was, I just watched her suffer through this. It was horrible because she had to have a hip replacement and <laughs> she ended up getting frustrated with the cast and she cut it off herself and it healed wrong. And the last like five years of her life, she was just in pain, in, in agony, yeah, yeah. super pain. And um, first of all, yeah, what about it, us? <laughs> yeah, it was just so frustrating because you know watching this amazing woman have to go through this. Her doctor was telling her that it, when it first started happening, is that she needed to do more exercise because that would fix it. But you're saying that this is a hormonal thing. Exercise would it probably should help a little bit, but there's going to be a limit to that, right? Right. So, so exercise does help and exercise does change our hormones. Yeah. So which, which I mean, exercise helps with several things that are hormonal problems uh, and actually can cause other uh, issues with hormonal problems because 
our muscles help with regulating certain um, hormones, our bones help with regulating certain hormones. So it definitely would have helped. But like you said, um, there's definitely a limit to certain things, but so is there for medication, you know, there's a limit yeah. to that. So what they're trying to do is combine, you know, the limit of the medication plus the limit of the exercise. Hopefully that will, you know, keep it at bay enough that you have a comfortable enough life as you go, as you grow older. Yeah. Actually, sorry. I actually think it was her knee, but she, she, they so, had a titanium yeah. knee put it. Yeah. But it was, it was due to menopause uh, degeneration. So. Well, that's it for this clip, but don't worry, I post clips regularly, and every Thursday, I post completely fresh content. Make sure you're subscribed. Liking and commenting is also welcome.